As pastor of Southview Church, I welcome you to this Facebook Live gathering. Now, uh, I'm bringing this message to you from my office, and my wife is making sure that you can see the sheep who have gathered for the message. <laughs> uh, we all are uh, practicing social distancing, so uh, my wife made sure we had a couple of sheep here to hear the message as the shepherd shares the message. Uh, we've gathered today to uh, worship God and to dive into his word. Jesus said, we're two or three gather in my name, I'll be there. He's here today. Wherever you are, Tri-Cities, Kingsport, and beyond, he's with us. He's here today. Let's pray today. God, we adore you today. We love you. God, we know we can't say that apart from your love in us. You first loved us, your scripture tells us. So we adore you today. We confess to the Lord how much we need you. Lord, um, we're sorry if it took something like this to get our attention to state to you and confess to you and live for you with the idea that we need you more than anything. Thank for your great grace, God, that meets us where we are. Lord, we're grateful. We're thankful for today, for how you're taking care of us. Um, more than anything, we're grateful for your son that you sent to die our sins and we might live forever. Finally, this morning, God, we need your spirit. Will you pre please guide us today? Lord, speak through me to touch lives and speak to me as you do it. And Lord, today, keep us mindful of your son who willingly fulfilled your plan, who went to the cross with reckless abandon for our souls. In his name I pray, amen. spoke a word, you were singing over me, you have been so, so good to me, before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me, you have been so, so kind to me. Still your love far from me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worse You paid it all for me You have been so, so
light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down series of messages. Um, we titled the series Journey to the Cross. On this journey to the cross we have focused on Jesus Cross. How he denied himself for us. Died for us. You know in light of this truth which is an awesome thing we've asked God to help us face and embrace his son and the cross of his son because that's where salvation comes from. If we come to Christ and ask for forgiveness and ask his blood to cover our sins, his sacrifice is what saves us. So if you've not embraced the cross, face and embrace the cross, in, 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 in your desire to know Jesus and have a relationship with him, I, I pray you will. But while that's an awesome thing, there's, there's more. You say, how could there be more? Well, Jesus calls us to follow him. To face and embrace a lifestyle of the cross for our own lives by taking up our cross. You know, the word Christian itself means one who follows Christ, one who knows and follows Christ, who tries to live like Christ as the Holy Spirit gives them strength. This makes me think of a humorous but a true statement. But this, this humorous quote reinforces the truth. You've heard this. If it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck it must be a duck no Jesus did not ask you to be a duck or a quack though some of you probably are quacks but he did ask and some people will say I'm a quack sometimes but he did ask us to follow him listen to the very words of Jesus and what he had to say about knowing him and picking up our cross like he picked up the cross and followed him. We read it from Luke chapter 9. Let me read it to you. If any of you want to be my followers, my disciples, you must deny yourself. In other words, put me, put, 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 put me ahead of yourself. That's what it means to deny ourselves. You must take up your cross each day and follow me. If you want to save your life, your very soul, that thing that's forever, you will destroy it if you focus on saving your life. Meaning, if you focus just on me, myself, and I, you'll lose your soul. But if you give up your life for me, Jesus said, give up your soul, your plan for my plan, then you'll gain your soul. And I, this last part of the verse is very powerful. What will you gain? 
if you own or gain the entire world, but destroy your very soul or waste your life on things that do not matter. Wow. Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow me. If you're going to be a Christian, Christ's follower who lives like me. I love the way Eugene Peterson states this in the message paraphrase. This is beautiful. Eugene Peterson says it like this, the same passage. Anyone who intends to come with me and follow me has to let me lead. These are the words of Jesus now. Jesus says this, you're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Don't forsake your cross. Embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how it works. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, to find in yourself, your soul, your true self. What good would it do to get everything you want but lose you, your very soul, the real you? So fulfillment in life and everlasting life is found in Christ's cross and our choice to carry our crosses. Speaking of crosses, no one would have ever could have ever seen what we're going through right now. January the 1st, 2020. We never dreamed that three months later that the coronavirus would hit us with a force that's impacted so many levels of our society. Hmm. We never, we never dream we're dealing with the fears uh, and sorrow and, and suffering and in some cases death of this coronavirus. Even so, Christ and his cross is front and center, the power of the cross. And if we put Christ and his cross first in our lives, at the pinnacle of our lives, oh, God help us do that, and we pick up our crosses, we will survive this. But I've got news for you. We're going to do more. We will thrive. <laughs> Just as Jesus died on the cross, he was raised from the dead. He went through all that stuff that we can never measure or tell about. But he survived. He thrived when he rose from the dead. And we will thrive if we put the crucified and risen Savior at the forefront of our lives. The cross is indeed a picture of it's worth a thousand words. You know, it doesn't require a lot of words. <laughs> you know, I have this cross around my neck. Um, I really wear it for me to remind me of what Jesus has done for me. But this is just a, a little, gives you a little shadow of the power of the cross itself. When we see the cross and our Jesus on that cross, Oh, we don't have to have a lot of words. But you know, Jesus gave us some great words, some powerful words while he was on that cross. And those words are so, um, they're so relative to our lives on this March 29th with our world in chaos. Will you join me today and open your ears and your hearts and your minds May we listen to the words of Christ from the cross. For a few moments, I want to take a closer look at the care and compassion of the Savior. The care and compassion of the Savior. We're reading from John 19, beginning at verse 16. Jesus, hand, Jesus was handed over by Pilate to the Jewish leaders to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus, carrying his own cross. He went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, divided them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. The garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Some, uh, some Bible scholars believe that that part of his clothes was made by his mother. Tradition would say it was. So when they got to the undergarment, they said, let's not tear it. 
Let's decide by lot. Let's, let's cast dice to see who we'll get. This happened that the Old Testament scripture, the words of God spoken in the Old Testament, might be fulfilled. And these words said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. It's a tender part of this passage coming up here. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved, John, standing nearby, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple John took Mary into his own home. Father, bless the reading of your word. Lord, as we read the crucifixion story, may it never become a ritual for us. But may it become real in the reality of our lives. And forever keep us humble. Humble before you and your son's cross. Now, God, take this word, beginning with me. Change my heart today. Change our hearts today, Lord. Draw us close to your son, Jesus. Let us see firsthand the care and compassion of your son, our Savior. Everything we say today, God, every, every aspect of this together, and we want it to bring glory, honor for your son, Jesus. I pray. Amen. A number of years ago, I heard something that John Maxwell said. Actually, I think this was in the 90s when I first heard it. John Maxwell uh, is a minister and a leadership um, person who does leadership seminars across America. This is what Maxwell said. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Let me say it again. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. <laughs> you can be sure that Jesus Christ has known more than any person in the history of the world or even before the world began. <laughs> in fact, Jesus, the word, because is the word became flesh. That when God spoke, spoke into existence, this world, when he created this world, that Jesus was right there with him. In fact, the Word tells us that Jesus is the Word that became flesh and came to our world. But even before that, Jesus was there with the Father. The Bible says that everything that was made was made in Him, by Him, through Him. So Jesus, certainly, His knowledge level, oh, we can fathom it. All of our brains together cannot fathom it. But yet, in looking at His life and death, we have to proclaim that no one ever cared like Jesus. No one ever had more compassion. It's the words of a song. It's an older song. You know, I think all songs are good, whether they're contemporary or choruses or hymns. The main thing is every song we sing is about Jesus, him, H-I-M. So this song, that's why as we look at these words, some of you will know this song. Some of you may think, well, that's an old song. I don't want to hear it. Listen to the words. Here's a song. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus. Since I found in him a friend so strong and true, I'll tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something no other friend could do. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Then the other verses go something like this. All my heart was full of sin when Jesus found me. All my heart was full of misery and woe. Jesus placed his strong arms around me, about me, it says. He led me in the way I ought to go. And then the last verse says this. Every day he comes to me with new assurance. More and more I understand his words of love. But I'll never know just why he came to save me until someday I see his blessed face above. No one ever cared for you and me like Jesus. 
There's no, ever, there's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take our sin and darkness from me and you. Oh, how much he cares and cared for you and me. Wow. Boy, that song has a lot of meaning today, doesn't it? You know, as we face COVID-19, coronavirus, there's a lot of uncertainties that you and I are experiencing. A lot of fear. But there's something you'd be certain of. You can and I can be certain <laughs> that we have a Savior of care and compassion. One who cares about the little things of your life. The little things of your life. Throughout his life and on the cross and in his dying, we see the, compa the, ca the care and compassion of Jesus. The Gospels tell us that Jesus cared about the little things. You know, some things may seem little to somebody, but they're big to you. But of course, all things in, in God's eyes are little because he can do all things. But Jesus tells us he cares about the details of our lives. We read in John chapter 2 of how Jesus attended a wedding. His, his, him and his disciples had been invited to this wedding. His mother was there. And about halfway through the wedding or thereabouts, they gave out a wine. In that tradition, if you gave out a wine at the wedding, it was going to be a, a, a mess, so to speak. I love what Mary in chapter 2 of John said to Jesus. She simply comes to her son, and this is what the scripture says. Mary said to Jesus, they have no more wine. <laughs> and then Jesus would say to the servants, fill the jars with water. And they filled these huge jars that were used for ceremonial cleaning with water. Cleansing and cleaning. And they went and filled them with water and they brought them back to the master of the, the banquet or the wedding feast. And he tasted it and he said, oh my, they saved the best wine for last. You see, Jesus cared about the little things. He knew that this man and woman were getting married and that their parents had put together this big shindig, if I may. And he knew that, that giving out of wine could, 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 cause, some, uh, could cause some problems. He, he shows us in this miracle that he cares about those things that we care about. They might not be so big to some people. or so Yeah, they might not be big to some people, but, but they're big to us. And we serve a, a Jesus, the Savior, God's Son, who cares about little things. You know, no one today knows what's stressing you out. You know, some might look at it and say, well, that's little stuff. To you, it's not. I've got news for you. In the midst of the coronavirus, the fear and uncertainty, oh, it's real. But Jesus cares. And while we may not know what lies ahead, Jesus cares and has great compassion for us. And not only that, he's been there, he's done that, and he's bought the T-shirt. You can have great joy today if Jesus cares. You know, I want to look at another time that Jesus shows us that he cares about the things that we worry about or concern us. What we might think is little, it's big to us. Peter, James, and John have fished all night. I know that's like. <laughs> Most of you know I talk a lot about being the son of fishermen. Truth of the matter is, is myself and my, our, our, my brothers, we were not tough enough physically to be commercial fishermen. But we worked on our daddy's fishing boat. We know what it's like to go out all night and not catch anything. Well, Jesus finds them the next morning cleaning their nets. I've done that before too. That's a stinky job. A nasty, stinky job to clean out nets. Jesus comes on the scene though and he says to that old rugged, crusty fisherman, Simon, Peter, take the boat out into the deep water and put the nets back out. You know, Peter's going, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? He 
doesn't say that to the master, or at least he doesn't say he says that to Jesus. But this is what the word says he said to, to Jesus. And we read this. We read this over there in the Gospels again. We read it over there, uh, in, in, I think it's in the Gospel of John. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Take the boat out. Then Peter says to, to Jesus, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught a thing. But we'll put the nets out because you told us so, to do so. When they had done so, they caught so many fish, the nets began to tear. <laughs> to some of my friends on the coast, I don't know, maybe some of my commercial fishing friends, Jesus cares. To each of us today, Jesus cares. He cares when it seems like life's not turning much up for us, so to speak. Jesus cares. It humbles me that the creator of the universe, the son of the living God, will make his way to the shoreline and meet up with some fishermen. He knew they hadn't caught any fish that night. Jesus cares about the little things of our life that others don't, may think it's little, but we know they're not little. Folks, no one ever cared for you or me, and no one ever loved us like Jesus. The care and compassion of the Savior Jesus and his Father extends to every detail, every minute detail in our lives. I'm grateful for a mother who's prayed about everything. It didn't, it doesn't matter what, it didn't matter was it small, big, it didn't matter. She went to Jesus for everything. <laughs> I think she understood some words that Jesus spoke over in Matthew 10 about how he cares about us, how he cares for us, the little things of life, all things he cares. He cares about all, all the things in our lives that affect us. Oh, you know, it's a beautiful voice, verse, excuse me, Matthew 10, 29. Jesus said, what is the price of two sparrows? One copper coin? But not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. And the very hairs of your head are numbered. Some of you, that's a lot fewer. <laughs> the very hairs of your head are numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Wow. The one who created this world the one that we sing that song, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. Father God, Jesus' Father and our Father, if we receive Christ, knows when every sparrow falls out of a tree. That's the God and Son who cares about the little things of life. Hmm. Oh man, we serve a great God. You know, in this coronavirus, let's be honest, you know what concerns us most? The welfare of our family, members, and friends. Uh, the uncertain economy makes parents think, how, how am I gonna pay the bills? How am I gonna support family? Even more, the coronavirus will bring sickness to some people's lives. You know, Pastor James and I were talking just a minute ago. Thank you, Pastor James, for all the producing you do on these virtual ministry times. He told me that a former player of the Denver Broncos went to visit family in Washington, D.C. and traveled back, I guess, to Colorado. In his 50s, he died of the coronavirus. There are people who are going to be sick from this, and some are going to die. Might be some that you love that will become sick or die. I want you to pray for a friend of mine, a James, we'll call him James K from back in Virginia. He texted me this week and said, please pray for my brother. He has the coronavirus and he's on an inflator. Huh. Pray for James K's brother. Yeah, we got some concerns and worries. 
about our friends and our family members. All kinds of worries. In relationships, we find out during times like this, that's the most important thing in life. Your relationship with God and your relationship with those friends and family. This is the second truth I want to tell you today. Jesus cares about those we love. <laughs> yes, he cares about the little things. But he cares about those we love. Well, the passage we read earlier, when Jesus saw his mother at the foot of the cross, and the disciple John he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time, this, this disciple took her into his home. Jesus, the God-man, fully God, fully man, saw his earthly mother, the one who bore him, his mother. And boy, our mothers are special to us, aren't they? He saw her. He saw his best friend, brokenhearted at the foot of the cross. And his, his heart broke. Jesus cares about those we love because he cared about those he loved and he loved them in us. And even in the most unfathomable fathomable pain and suffering on that cross, Jesus was thinking of others. He loved and cared for them. So we shouldn't be surprised. Oh, that if the one who died for our sins, who went to the cross to die for our sins, we should not be surprised that he loves us and he loves our loved ones. There's a story in the Gospels, Matthew 8, verse 14. Jesus went to Peter's house one day. He arrived to find Peter's mother-in-law sick with high fever. Matthew 8, 14 says this. Jesus touched her hand and the fever left her. And she got up and fixed him a meal. <laughs> she got up and fried some chicken, cooked some mashed potatoes and gravy. Yes, Jesus loves our loved ones. And yes, he even loves our mothers-in-law. <laughs> oh, God is so good today. We need a little humor there. Then I love the encounter Jesus had with a mother whose son had died. Jesus meets her as the pallbearers are taking her son's body to the cemetery. Let me, read, let me read it for you. Luke 17. Luke 17. Jesus went to the town of Nain. A large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming out and as, he, as Jesus approached the village gate. The young man who had died was the widow's only son and a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it. And the pallbearer stopped. Young man, I tell you to get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Can you hear Jesus? Two words resonate down through history. Don't cry. Wow. Jesus loves and cares about our loved ones today. You know, Jesus saw his mother. He knew. He saw his mother that day on the cross. And he knew she was experiencing what this widow had experienced. The only difference was no one was going to come and take Mary's son down from that cross and rescue him from this cruel death. So in that moment, Jesus' heart went out to his mother. And he said, and I'm paraphrasing, John. I'm going to use a southern way of saying it. John, will you take care of my mama? Hmm. Great care and compassion, folks. That's our Savior. He wanted to make his mom would be okay. And then he looks at John, his best friend. He's brokenhearted. 
John is broken. And he says, friend, <laughs> I give you my mama today. Wow. Only eternity will tell the impact that Jesus' mother had on the life of St. John. But aren't you glad that Jesus is a Savior of great care and compassion? He has the whole world in his hands. Yet he cares for every little detail of our lives. And if he cares for every little detail, he surely cares for our loved ones. And most of all today, this is the final truth of today's message. Jesus on the cross took care of what lasts forever. You know, more often than not, people dismiss faith in God. Oh, those stories about Jesus, those were just when I was a kid in Sunday school. You know, I'm grown up now. Hmm. You know, I'm not going to trust in some storybook Jesus. I'm going to put my trust in things you can touch and feel and know. Did you ever consider that the coronavirus has taught us that you can't trust and I can't trust in anything you can see, touch, or know? For the things we trust in, our health, our health care system, our wealth, institutions of higher learning, all the colleges have shut down, sent kids home, our very way of life. Uh uh, can't trust in that. It would seem to me that now would be the time to begin to put your faith and trust in the Savior of care and compassion. You know, faith's an interesting thing. That's to put it mildly. Every one of us have faith. You say, what do you mean? Not all of us have faith in Christ. Uh, let's give an example. Let's just suppose today if there wasn't, uh, uh, you were going to take a flight. And let's just say uh, you were going to go over to Nashville and catch a flight to Chicago. But of course, no one's going to fly to Chicago or no one's really traveling now. So you go over to the airport there in Nashville. Southwest Airlines has their plane there. You come up to the security of the airport. You're trusting those baggage checkers are going to pick up on any guns or bombs. You're trusting them. Then you go get on a plane and strap your seatbelt on, and you are trusting that the pilot has had adequate training. He's had adequate sleep to fly the plane. He knows, you're trusting he knows what he's doing. You're trusting the guy who fueled the plane put enough fuel in it. And you don't think twice, well, maybe you do, that once you put your seatbelt on that you're going to uh, uh, arrive when you fly to Nashville where you're going. You're trusting. You're putting your faith in all that. Well, it was seen to me that by God's grace, because we can't do it in our strength, that we ought to put our faith and trust in God who loved us so much he sent his only begotten son to die for our sins, to take care of what lasts forever. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, only three things are going to last forever. Faith, and I'm going to add two words, in Christ. Hope of Christ and the love of Christ. Faith hope, and love are the only things that will last. You know, some of you today are saying, that sounds good, Bill. That sounds good, Billy. Some of you I've known since I was a kid, Billy Joe. That sounds good. Or pastor. That all sounds good. Maybe you're, you're thinking, that, but pastor, you don't know what I've gone through. You don't know how many hardships that, that I've had to endure. It's been one heartbreak after another. And I don't think God cares about me. If he's out there, he surely doesn't care about me. And I pray today that by God's great grace, you will begin to see your life in the light of eternity, what lasts forever as opposed to what doesn't last forever. You know, I could never understand 
the reasons you question God. I've got my own questions for God. I won't go into those. But when I look to the cross, I see a Savior that loves you and me, that loves our souls. That part of us is going to live forever. You, you may have had all kinds of struggles in your life, financial health, the list could go on. My wife and I have experienced some of those things. But, but we have a Jesus who, who loves us and cares for us so much. He came to take care of what lasts, our never dying souls. The Savior who loved us so much, so much that he died to fulfill his, God, his Father's plan that we might last and live forever. You know, there's a, we used to hear this song in Sunday school. It comes out of the scriptures. Jesus told a story one time. Uh, the song goes something like this. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. That rock was Jesus. And when the storms of life came blowing through like a nor'easter, it did not move the one who had built his house on the rock. Then it goes to say, the foolish man built his house on the sand. But when the storms came, it washed the house away. Well, Jesus is talking about our lives. Jesus came to take care of what lasts forever. So, no, I can't understand what you've gone through. My heart breaks for you. Someone said that, some of you guys out there, I do know your situation. Some I don't. Most I don't. But I do know this. I heard it said one time that the best definition of sympathy or true love is your pain in my heart. And we should, we should do that in our lives with those we love or our, those we work with or, or friends or whatever. But Jesus is the epitome of what that means. Our pain in his heart. Pain that we were lost in sin and on our way to a place called hell apart from his saving grace. You know, I look at the cross, I see a Savior that will only die for my sins, that I might live forever. You know, um, someone wrote a song, I mentioned it a few Sundays ago, uh, it goes something like this, what's forever for? Some of you remember that song. Forever is for, for living in heaven with God, apart from pain and sin and sorrow. The Savior died for what last. We can even see it on the cross. He said, what do you mean? Yes, he died for our sins. We see that. But listen to some of the words he said for the cross. The religious leaders were mocking him at the foot of the cross. You know what Jesus said? He prayed. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Oh. He was praying for their souls. He's the enemies. And then I love the conversation that a one of the criminals had with Jesus. <laughs> he doesn't have much to offer, this criminal. His life's been a total waste. <laughs> he begins to wonder, though, who's this man on the middle cross? He thinks to himself, he must be a king. I see no bitterness. I see no hate. I see care. I see care and compassion. I, be, I think you begin to wonder if this could be the one that cared for him like no other. And so he looks over to Jesus and with a simple question, do you know to come to know Christ and to walk with Christ, the words are not important. It's, it's our heart. And the thief looked at Jesus and said, will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? And Jesus said, most assuredly, I'll tell you again, I'm going to tell you more than once, today you will be with me in paradise. 
Savior of care and compassion. <laughs> oh, he cares about the little things that aren't little to us. He loves your family more than you do. cares for our loved ones. And most importantly, he cares for what lasts forever. We're almost done here. I had a neighbor friend, Clifton Newmans. He lived across the street from where I grew up on Harker's Island. Red Hill Territory there on Harker's Island. Clifton Newmans made a lasting impression on me. You know, I don't know how old he was when I first met him, probably 70, I'm not sure, 60s or 70s. Him and I would watch basketball together. I would go over and we would watch some of the ACC basketball games and he just had the best spirit about him. I knew he loved Jesus. He didn't say a whole lot. He had a big mouth like me. <laughs> he just lived a beautiful, quiet life. He reminded me of of Jesus. Every so often, Clifton Newmans would stand up in church at the Free Grace Church. If I'm not mistaken, he usually said the same thing when he testified about God. I'll never forget it. I was about my son's age, maybe 15 or 16. I'm not sure, maybe younger, when I first heard him. I saw him stand up one morning or one Wednesday evening and he stretched his arms out and he said if you ever doubt how much God loves you just look at the cross where Jesus stretched his arms out for you and he sat down I don't know much about this coronavirus I don't know what holds to, what, what tomorrow holds there's one song that says there's some things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand but I know who holds tomorrow for I know who holds my hand. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God the Father, the Savior of great care and compassion. Let's pray for a moment, and then we're going to finalize with a song. Father God, only you know how your word has gone out this morning. I have done my best to proclaim your great care and compassion today, precious Jesus. I'm fully aware that there's no power in my human words, but there's power in your Holy Spirit that I am confident today has taken your word to lives at Southview Church and lives who knows where. And I pray each person today, maybe there's someone who not received you as their Savior. Lord, may you lead me to get alone with you and not worry about the words. And even right now they might pray this. To the man on the middle cross, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. By stating that today, they're putting their faith in you, Jesus. I pray they'll pray it even now and begin to live for you and all your spirit. For they're going to hear you say, you will be with me in paradise. It might not be today because only you know our time. But one day, they'll be with you. When there's others out there today, maybe they are Christ followers. They follow you. Lord, this coronavirus has gripped them with fear. God, I know we should have a, 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 a concern and be careful in all these things and, and do what the, the CDC and the people are telling us. But Lord, your word says it over and over, fear not. And Lord, sometimes the fear comes rushing in. And have great fear, but God, by your grace, through the, the person of your Son, fear doesn't have to have us. May we all today remember the great care and compassion 
of your son, Father God, the one seated at your right hand that your word says is interceding for us today. Jesus, you are speaking to the Father on our behalf. Help us by your great grace, God, through the person of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of your Holy Spirit, to remember that you care about all the little things and that you, more than we can ever know, care about our loved ones. And to help us remember that you've taken care of lasting things and focus us more than ever the hereafter. Lord, I heard my mom say uh, something like this. Uh, I think she got it from somebody else, but it doesn't matter, God. This life is the stage. The stage for the eternal drama. We better make sure we have on the right clothes. Jesus, change our hearts. Save us today and saturate us with you. We love you, God. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. Lord, we know you're going to use these negative events for your good. We don't know how. We can already see it. Lord, I want to close this prayer with something I saw on the side of Dallas Rose's truck. Dallas Rose, that Parker's Island fisherman. I remember God being at Billy Best Supermarket when Dallas would come in. He always had a smile on his face. Always had a good spirit about him. Lord, I'll never forget a six or eight little, year old little boy. He drove that former bread truck. He was using it to carry nets and stuff in, this rugged fisherman. And he had a phrase on the side of the truck. It didn't make sense. Jesus, others, yourself. And I couldn't figure out how that sentence went. It just didn't have enough words. And so I asked Mom one day, what does that mean, Mom? And I just couldn't put the sentence together. She said, honey, that means put Jesus first. Jesus. Others next. Jesus, others. And yourself last. In closing, that's what it looks like to know Jesus and follow him. We love you today. Lord, I thank you for each person that's tuned in or who will watch this video even now or later. You'll use it for your son's glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This morning I want to have a final song here. And we'll have a few closing comments. This song is a powerful song. It's called The God of the Impossible. For some of you folks who might be older, this is going to sound like a rock and roll song. Let me tell you something. If you'll listen to the words and allow the Holy Spirit to touch you today, it will rock and roll your soul for Jesus. God of the impossible. Listen to this song today.
The God of the Impossible. I'm not going to preach you another message, but I could share a lot of impossibles in my life. That by God's grace, because we can't do anything on our own, He gave me the faith to trust Him. Wherever you are today, whoever you are, will you allow God through His Son to be your God of impossibilities. We just thank you for being with us today. Um, God bless you. He loves you today. Before we uh, finalize this morning, I want to speak to our church family. Uh, God has asked me to be able to serve here in the Tri-Cities area of Tennessee, uh, South View Community Church, Kingsport. Uh, I miss being with you. I miss hugging you. Miss, uh, miss your smiles. This social distance thing, uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but I'm a big fan of you staying healthy. Um, I'm grateful that we have this opportunity to worship in this format uh, to our pastors. I, I miss ministering with Pastor Teresa and Pastor Seth and uh, Pastor Laura. Um, I'm grateful for each one of them and their service to God and our church. I'm grateful for Pastor James. I, I couldn't do this without him. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. Um, let's look at the things we want to continue to focus on before we say goodbye. Communication. We're going to keep communicating with you best we can. Um, phone, email, 
the e the mail, <laughs> uh, Instagram, Facebook. Um, let's keep good communication going, not only from staff and leaders to you, um, but between each other. In fact, we have a board meeting um, with a new platform we've recently learned about called Zoom. We got all of our board members on the computer this week, and we had a meeting. You can see everybody on the computer or those who show their face, and we had a meeting. Our, our local uh, church board. Um, but we got to stay. We got to have good communication continually. We want to be careful to follow the recommendation of our leaders. Let's 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 practice caution. We got to connect. This is perhaps the most important one. Connect with Christ and each other like never before. Commitment. Um, I'm fully aware that a lot of you have had a negative impact with your jobs and finances. I just pray that you'll, you'll ask God to give you the grace to support how he directs you with your financial commitment to the church. Um, you can use the mail. You can use uh, bill pay um, through your bank, or you can use uh, PayPal on our website. Also, I want to thank Ralph, one of our leaders, who installed an envelope slot at our church facility near the uh, office door if you want to drop off your financial contributions. And it's something my brother Kerry says, no pressure, only God's pleasure. Finally today, compassion to others. Um, we don't know where this coronavirus is taking our, our, our world and our community. Um, but um, we're going to begin as staff and leaders to turn our attention to how are we going to respond with love to our community. If it really gets bad here, uh, there'll be people who will need food um, and um, medical care and all that. Uh, we want to make sure that we live up to our mission. Jesus said, love God all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and your neighbors yourself and go tell them about it. Hmm. Love goes. Love God. Love others. East Tennessee and beyond through serving as Jesus served. Well, that's all I have today, except my wife wants to put the sheep out again to remind you to practice social safety and social distancing. And um, um, I love her sense of humor. She keeps me straight. Have a blessed day. Don't forget, Jesus loves you. I love you, and we love you. Thank you again. God bless.